Welcome to the evening show. My name is Phil Swift, and I am here today with America's relationship doctor, Gary Smiley. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. We're just gonna we're gonna jump right into the questions. Uh, in your book, Change Your Heart, Change Your Life, you talk about changing your beliefs and behaviors. Uh, realistically, how can people do that? How can they change their beliefs and their behaviors? Yeah, yeah. So in my book, Change Your Heart, Change Your Life, as you noted, I give um, five practical steps of how you can change your beliefs and those patterns within yourself. A lot of this stems um, from my belief that we can really only change things through Christ and mm. through God. Um, so first, what you're going to want to do is identify your behavior that needs to change. Wow. Um, so this takes some self-awareness and some being able to look at yourself and seeing the anger or the hurt that you've put in your life and allowed to take over and saying that that needs to change. Second, you're going to want to admit that those behaviors aren't godly. Mm. Um, so those behaviors that are leading you farther from Christ and from being able to love on others, you're going to want um, to admit that and see that you need to change from there. Third, locate scripture verses that address um, this problem behavior. So if it's hatred or anger, um, whatever is clawing at you, finding verses. Uh, for example, in my life, I've seen, in, in people around me's life, I've seen anxiety. Yeah. And so I would say go to Matthew and memorize yeah. those scripture verses of um, of realizing that the Lord will be your provider. Yeah, even um, the birds in the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And memorizing that selected scripture, that's the fourth. Um, so being able to memorize that so when you feel anxious, you can say, the Lord the Lord will provide. Um, and last, you're going to want to deepen the imprint of God's word on your heart. Wow. Really just keep that stored. That's good. Um, and that's what I would tell to people who are, who are wanting to change those beliefs and those behaviors. As if you can start with that biblical foundation, your behaviors will then stem from those beliefs. Mm, that's really good, Gary. And after you've changed these beliefs and behaviors and you're trying to create new relationships, um, how, uh, not even how, what is the DNA of relationships at your base level? Yeah, so the DNA of relationships I actually talk about in my book, The DNA of Relationships. Wow. Um, DNA, as you know, has um, different strands. Mm -hmm. So the three strands of the DNA of relationships is first that you were made for relationships. That's good. We see that this is biblical. Um, Adam was was made by God, and then God saw that he needs someone else, and so he provided Eve. Yeah. Um, and I think that goes forward through the generations of we're better with community. Um, so first, you're made for relationships. Second, you're made with the capacity to choose. That's good. Um, so choosing your behavior and your beliefs and the way that you react to those beliefs. Um, like we talked about earlier, you want to see those unhealthy patterns. You want to change them. But you have to choose to change them. So that's the second strand. Mm -hmm. um, and the third strand is that you're made to take responsibility for ourselves. Um, first, we'll all stand for um, the judgment of God and have to take an account for our actions. Um, but also how we act in relationships. You have the power of one being able to change only one person. The power over only one person and that's yourself. Um, and so those are the three strands of relationships. And this helps you to have healthy relationships with the expectations that no one else can fulfill you but the Lord. Wow, that's really good, Gary. Yeah, Gary, and I'm not much of a dancer, uh, but you have something you like to talk about, which is the fear dance. Could you talk yes. about the fear dance? The fear dance is a destructive cycle that every single person does mm. whenever their core fear is triggered. And this core fear could be one of failure, inadequacy, um, of never being loved. Um, but the fear dance is this relationship crisis that goes, I hurt, I want, I fear, I react. Therefore, you hurt, you want, you fear, you react. And those reactions stem to the hurt, if you mm, notice. And it just keeps going in a keeps circle. keeps going in a wow. circle until you can address that hurt in yourself and then change the way you react not hurting the other person and this goes back to that power of one you can only change yourself yes hoping then that the reaction of the other person can follow suit if you're doing this together um and so this fear dance i've noticed there are different ways to get out of the fear dance the self-care um that's something that's going to be super important 
creating a safe place so that yeah. you can break down the wall. Tell us a little more. How do you how do you do that? How do you create a safe place? Yeah, creating a safe place. Um, so first, you want to respect the wall. A lot of wow. people will put up a wall okay. because they've been hurt. So respect that. Don't require that a person um, be just vulnerable with you right off the bat. Make sure that they know that it's a safe place. Then you want to honor them. If you can see them the way that God sees them, um, you'll see that wall break down as you value them. That's good. Then suspend judgment. Come with um, a posture of curiosity rather than a posture that's going to judge the person for their feelings. Be curious. Why is it that you feel that way? How can I help? Rather than, you feel that way? I can't believe that. So coming with curiosity. Um, and then value the differences in opinion. Say, I value that. I like how you see from a different perspective rather than your way being the highway. Um, and then fifth and last, you want to be trustworthy. Wow. Um, trustworthy is going to create this safe place and make it to where the person knows that uh, that you're really there for them and you can trust them. And that even starts with trusting yourself and then trusting others. That's really good, Gary. Yeah, and, and something you talked about that I like, but I want you to expound on, is the no loser policy. Yeah. Um, so the no loser policy is uh, the last step in that fear dance um creating the new cycle of how to get out of the fear dance. So the loser policy um, is basically saying that there is going to be no loser. No losers at all. Yeah. Um, and this isn't compromising because compromising is just tolerating. Mm. And tolerating brings two losers and no winners. Wow. Um, so how to create a win-win solution. I have seven steps that I like to give people. Um, so first, you have to be on the same page that you're going to establish a no loser policy. Um, second, you got to listen to how the other person feels, hear out their side of the story. Then we're going to bring God in and ask for his opinion. What does the Lord say about this? Um, and opening up to say that we want to both be on the page of the Lord rather than on what we want for ourselves. So then fourth, you're going to brainstorm win-win solutions. This is where I encourage people to grab a pen and paper and just write down lists of different solutions. From there, you're then going to pick which solution do you think works best for both of you. This has to be unanimous, one that you both like and you don't feel like you're settling for. Then you're going to want to implement this solution. And then lastly, once you've implemented it, uh, we want you to go back and just see, is the solution working? Do we need to reevaluate? Is there a better solution? Uh, because maybe you implement it and one person does feel like they've been pushed over. Well, then you want to go back and say, well, let's do one where both people feel like they yeah. have had deciding factors in this. Um, and so that is the best way, we believe, um, to eliminate the possibility of any losers. That's really good, Gary. Yeah. Thank you for your time so far. I only have one more question for you. Uh, and that is, what is the last thing you'd like to leave to all of our viewers? What is this one nugget from all of your, your research and from your book that you would just like to impart on our, on our uh, viewers? Yeah, great question. Um, so one thing, if I could go back and tell, tell younger Gary, um, would be to shift your focus mm. from changing others wow. to changing yourself. Wow. So often in relationships, we try to change the other person and we say, if they would just change this about them, if they would just do this, rather than um, seeing in ourselves of, of how I can change, of how I can be better. Um, so focus on you. Focus on how you can change yourself for other people. Become the you you want rather than searching for that in other people. Um, and if you find yourself saying it's not working, just recheck your goal and recheck yourself. That would be my last, my little nugget for, for mm, our viewers. Focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's good because you can only change yourself. one person and that's yourself. That's really good, Gary. Well... Thank you, viewers. Uh, you're watching Channel 7, The Evening Show. I am so glad to be your host today, and uh, we're thankful to have someone as great as Gary on our show. We will see you next time. Well, I hope that interview was helpful um, for getting me able to visualize how Gary Smalley would have talked about his theory in his own words and hearing the different steps that he provides um, when it comes to the no loser policy, how to change your beliefs and patterns, um, and how to create a safe place particularly. Um, the last thing I wanna touch on is just where do I stand on Gary Smalley's theory? 
Um, so overall, I think that Gary's theory is highly beneficial for couples and individuals when used correctly, and it has the power to, to change perspective and lives. Not only does it come with a great theological foundation, um, but it comes in with a lot of practical steps that people can put into their toolbox and use when they see themselves slipping into destructive patterns. Um, the only thing that I would say about this theory um, is that I wonder how it does with um, severe mental disorders um, and also abusive relationships, places where it feels like there's no way out and you can't rely on just yourself. Um, I think that this theory has the power to work in those relationships, but that's just where I would personally wonder, maybe there's a better theory that would work for those types of relationships and um, disorders. Um, but overall, I think this theory is beneficial, especially for people going through the normal cycle of life. I hope that this has been helpful and um, if you guys have enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much.